What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Dia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. Now, um, when we left you guys before, this is part two of what, what do you want to call this podcast? I don't know. <coughs> Can we not title it now? Then you're going to commit us to a title that I might not like in hindsight. Okay. Babe, we'll call it Baby Kingston's here. Well, the baby's name is not Kingston. Through much deliberation, the entire pregnancy, we thought that the baby's name was going to be Kingston. And then at the end... Wait, we'll get to that. We'll get to the name. So that's not going to be the title. No, that's not going to be the title. But let's, let's start where we finished off. So now... Let me start by telling you that I am feeling a little... <laughs> because this Bailey's is going through me like... It's like all in my brain right now. That's so right. I might be a little happier this time than usual. Yeah, she hasn't drank in nine months in a week. Yes. so Probably, and I before, probably before that too. And then I've been up all night with the baby and whatnot, so I haven't really had a proper meal. So I'm kind of like on an empty stomach. The only thing that I've eaten is a special cake that Rashawn buys me for every special occasion. Yep. It's um, like white cake with fresh whipped cream and mm -hmm. fresh cut strawberries. It's my favorite cake in the world for my favorite bakery. So I'm only going off of cake and Bailey's right now. That's right. So. And shout out to Ben's because I asked Ben's to pick it up for me and Ben's drove all the way to Long Island to go get it for me. Yes. So thank you, uh, Ben's, Mercedes, my assistant, who uh, just bought her new crib for her first crib. We'll talk about yes! that too. Yes! We'll talk about that too. <laughs> yes. But now where were we? So now we left off gears in the hospital uh, and now they're getting ready. So... They put the epidural in gear. Yes. All right. So the epidural's in gear. Gear's laid down, and now we're just waiting. And we're just waiting. How long did we wait? I fell asleep. Um, just a few hours. Just a few hours. Maybe just two. Just a few maybe hours. Maybe two, three hours. So we get to the hospital around. I would say the game ended about seven, seven thirty. We get to the hospital about eight o'clock. By the time they check in, they put the epidural in. They call the doctor. So now the contractions are happening, right? Now, at yeah. the time, Gia, she was what, I about get to, four or five centimeters? No, no, I get to the hospital at three centimeters. At three centimeters. About three centimeters. Um, then I advanced to four centimeters. And they were, they were going to induce Gia. Yeah, because I was technically past due. My due date was November 26th, and here we are that day, November 27th. So technically, I can be induced. But the thing with being induced is that your contractions are brought on artificially. I can't drink any more of this. I'm done with this. Okay. <laughs> I can't drink any more. Your contractions are brought on arti artificially, mm -hmm. so they're stronger. They're more intense. So if you cannot be induced, I would probably choose not to be induced. But since we were there and I was eligible to be induced, we were kind of going that route. I was induced with Madison, right. actually. So I can attest to you know, these artificial con contractions being so much stronger. Um, but I started dilating on my own, and there was no need to do it. So I went from nine, meter, nine centimeters when I was first checked all the way to like, I didn't mean the that. The other way around. You went from four. Yeah, I can't drink. I can't. Well, that's right. I can't I help do you out. I help you out. Right. So you went from. It's only been one glass. I know. So wow. You went from I went four from four meters, centimeters uh -huh. um, when they last checked to nine centimeters. And my doctor came in. She's like, all right, well, we're ready to push. Now watch this. Now, now this was about 2.15. I was like, ready to push? Like, I feel like I just got here. Like, no, ready to push. This was at 2.15. So 2.15, the doctor comes in. I'm sleeping. She goes, all right, guys, we're ready, ready to go, ready to push. So they turn the lights on. You know, I might put the sleep out my eyes. I'm getting myself together through some water in my face. Gia was like, all right, uh, give me a second. So Gia pulls out her mirror. She makes sure she looks amazing. And she's doing to the point where the doctor is sitting on the side talking to me, asking about all the other kids. And then it gets to the point, Gia's like, are y'all ready? We like, we waiting on you, motherfucker. Well, I was already ready from the day. Like, mm -hmm. I got ready thinking that I was going to deliver. So I was already ready. I just took out my mirror just to make sure that, you know, my eyeliner hadn't run and my mascara hadn't run. So I was just, you know, doing a little fresh check. That mm -hmm. was all. So the labor prop, the That's actual it. pushing part probably lasted maybe. Let me see if you know how long it actually lasted. Because it was three pushes, on... maybe, maybe eight minutes. Wow, you are so off. Uh, 
I thought you were going to say I was on. Go, how long? She said, I thought you were going to say I was on. Yeah. <laughs> From the moment that the doctor said push to the moment that the baby was delivered was one minute and 37 seconds. Oh. It felt longer to you? It did. Because you, you, the first one, you, uh, it was a test push, right? It was, well, yeah. That was just a test push, though. Test push. Then you push. And the baby was right there. Right. You right? pushed one time. Well, what happened? What did you see? Because I didn't see what you saw. Okay, so first it was the test push, right? Well, you have to tell them what happened in the test push. Okay, so now they're trying to see if it's, um, <laughs> so now they're trying to see where the baby is. So they was like, all right, give me a test push. So Just like with Logan, give me a test push. So now, <clears throat> all right, I'll tell you. So now, so, so this is. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So like I told you, I went from four centimeters to nine centimeters like okay. that, right? What are you? Put the candle down. No, I gotta, what are you doing? I gotta show him how. No, it. you have to show him anything. Put the damn candle down. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so they didn't expect for me to dilate as quickly. So they never put the catheter in the urethra for the urine. So when you're numb from here down, your body will just do what it do. So they put a tube in to collect the urine if your body feels the need to urinate, right? You all know what I'm talking about if you have kids, right? They never inserted it. So I didn't know, because you typically you don't even know what they're doing down there, right? So the doctor says, all right, give me a test push. That's a, a test push. Mm -hmm. Bear down. So when I bear down and gave her a test push. She squirted on a doctor. Okay, the doctor. Okay, the baby. And a little bit of, like, there's a little bit of tinkle. It wasn't no tinkle. <laughs> it was if, like, whoosh. If you ever watch a porn, and, and you'd be like, how, how these girls squirt? Gia, Gia could be in a, been in a porn. When I say it was like, <laughs> it, it hit the doctor's shoulder. It, it, it's, it, I was like, oh, watch your face. <laughs> hit the doctor, then the doctor was like this, oh, shit. <laughs> so the doctor was like, OK, Gia, you just peed on me. Now I have to go change. I was like, yo, you should have noticed that the, <laughs> the Catheter wasn't in there. So yeah, that, that was very know? interesting. So then the doctor goes and changes, comes, comes right but back. But she made her little appearance, right? Her little hair? Yeah, a little bit. You could just see a little bit. You could just see the hair. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then, boom, come back. The doctor goes, okay, we're going to try it one now, more time. Now, mind you, this is Dr. Collado, mm -hmm. Dr. Anna Collado um, at Hackensack's OBGYN. Mm -hmm. She delivered four of our six, so the last four. So London, Jackson, Brooklyn, and now... Baby Peyton Blair. That's right. Yes. So now Gia pushes, and while she's pushing, to me it seems like she she's opening the hole, like like opening the hole just like this, like she's, with the doctor. Yeah, she's like doing it like that, she's like doing this. Yeah, like yeah. like like opening the hole, right? And you push. So now the hole is is bigger, right? They push again, then the head comes out like this, right? <laughs> now the, the head at first looks like like that. Well, no, it's like the head. It's like no, nah, but when you come out, no, as soon as the head comes out, they hold the head of face up. Oh, okay. So now you just see the face, and then you see the face, and it's like it looks like some alien shit. Like the neck is just hanging out the vagina, like like this, and she got to hold the head for support, and then they're headed like this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> headed like just like this. They like push again, <laughs> and when they push again, and it's like this, it, this it just look nasty because now the shoulders come out the vagina, and be like, <clears throat> and it's just like a big blob, like. And the baby like this, you be like, what the fuck is that? And the baby looking at you, and the face, it looked like smush face, because the baby's face was all smushed at first. And then I had to cut the umbilical cord. Yes. Oh, wait, I have a video of you cutting the umbilical cord. You want to show them? OK. So there's a little hoo-ha in the video. So if Eric. <laughs> His name is Ryan. <laughs> That's not Eric. If Eric can put a little sticker over the hoo-ha, you're going to become far more familiar with me than you would like to. Um, but if you could put a little sticker in front of the hoo-ha. You got a pussy cat sticker? No, I don't. You know, no, you go, you're awful. What? <laughs> what? You're just awful. What? But I like that idea, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> if you could put a sticker there, then we'll show the video now. Okay. You got it? Yeah, okay. Right, we'll cut right here. Yeah. This last one. Okay. okay, final cut. There we oh, go. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take it. If not, I just pointed at y'all for no reason. No, no, no. <laughs> we, got, we got you. We got you. And disregard it. Um, but yeah, so Rashawn cutting the umbilical cord. And it's, 
listen, for all of you mothers-to-be, if you're pregnant now or if you plan to be one day, listen, if you get that epidural, it's all good in the hood. Like, mm -hmm. you feel no pain. I felt no pain the whole time that, you know, I'm delivering in that minute and 37 seconds. We're laughing, we're joking, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to peek and see as much as I can see, you know what I mean? Um, typically, I record with my phone from my POV, from my point of view. So I've had pictures of, you know, the baby coming out with the umbilical cord from my POV and whatnot. But for some reason, this time, I chose to put my phone down and I was holding like the back of my thighs to help me bear down. Mm -hmm. So I don't have my own POV, but we have other pictures and video and things like that. So question, so. what most women are ask is, you know, you hear a lot of times if you have an epidural, it gives you back problems. Have you had any of that? Um, none that were long standing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember after which child, but yes, after an epidural, I did have a little bit of lower back pain, but it wasn't permanent. Okay. It was for a particular amount of time, and then it went away. And in my opinion, it was hella worth it times a thousand. Mm. I can't imagine, and a lot of you women have done it, a lot of women choose not to have the epidural because what I've heard is they want to go through the pain of what it bring, what it um, feels like to bring a life into the world. So they want to experience that. I, on the other hand, do not. So <laughs> I had an epidural for every single one of my babies, mm -hmm. and it's always been a pleasant and joyous experience. And um, I've experienced no pain, just pressure. You feel the baby passing through you. You feel the need to push. You feel what's going on, but there's no pain associated. Got you. So it's always been my recommendation, and my mother told me that I'd be crazy to <laughs> even consider anything else. Because I remember talking to my mom about it years ago, like, well, what do you think about you know women that want to feel the pain of bringing the baby into the world? And she was like, well, that's for the birds, as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to feel any pain. Mm -hmm. And I took on that um, frame of mind as well. You know, so, it was, you know what was wild the so other day? So it was actually fun. Yes. My mom was here, and she was telling me about when she was pregnant with me. And she was like, yeah, I was smoking cigarettes and drinking when pregnant with you. I was like, God. Did you add the drinking? I don't remember her saying drinking. drinking. No, she didn't say drinking. You always have to exaggerate said, everything. <laughs> she didn't say drinking. Well, she said she was smoking cigarettes. She definitely smoked cigarettes well, the, during the entire pregnancy, she said. Goodness gracious. So my, right? lung, my lungs are fucked up. That's then. the way you are the way that you are. That's probably why. That's why I'm, you mess up. That, listen, that's why you mess up every story. You exaggerate everything because. The cigarette smoke. The nicotine. The Newports. Back to you. But back to, uh, so that a baby comes out. I cut the umbilical cord. Baby doesn't cry. They put the baby under the little heating station? No. They cut it, they put the baby on me immediately. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. I have the video. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They put the baby under the heating thing and then they put it, they said, no, chest to chest. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. As soon as the baby was cut, we walked right to the heating station. You lie about everything. Because the baby wasn't <laughs> naked on you. <laughs> the baby was naked on me. Uh. Ben, can you do me a favor, real no, quick? If she, if she says it. Can you just go in my room and grab my phone? I, it's I, either in the bathroom or like on my bed. So you tell the story the then. No, you can continue. Doing I a, thought that you were doing a fine job. So they until, put the baby on you no, and then it went to the heating. As soon as you cut the umbilical cord, they t they put the baby on me immediately. And then and they that went to the was, station. And that was the moment that I was like, she does exist. And then we went to the heating station? And, and then they then, put it back on you? Yes. Then they took the baby oh. and brought it to the heating station. Where was I? And I think that you gave the baby her first bottle. I did, yeah. Right? They cleaned the baby off. And then they brought the baby back to me. And I had my own blanket for her to cover her up in and whatnot. And then we did skin to skin for an hour. Oh, wow. Before so, they took the baby. So, so how was it feeling that skin to skin? The first skin to skin? Because even when I fed the baby for the first time, I was still like... Can something still happen? So wow, you were really, see, you were really traumatized too. Still traumatized we're until both, we see the doctor this week. We're both traumatized. <laughs> um, and I never wanted to tell you because I didn't want you scared. So I but didn't. But you know, anything. I wouldn't have gotten scared. But you, you know, you never know. But so, how was that first feeling of? Hold on one second. You got my phone? Hold on. I just got to prove Rashawn wrong. Because I got video. Let's how see. are we gonna do that in the middle of podcast? I believe you. Because we might show it. 
We can't show all that. We can show something. Maybe. Definitely can't. Because we don't have video of that. Hold on. Let me show you real quick. Babe. Relax. One minute and... Oh, one minute and 27 seconds. Mm. So look, let me fast forward to the end. Okay. Look. Ooh. Look at all that graphicness. Okay. All right. Hold all right. On. All right. Look, look. Hold on. There she comes out. Look. Oh, okay. All right. Wait, wait, what? Wait, hold on. Look. Watch. You almost deleted it. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, right on me. Okay. All right. I believe you. So the, th that was the first thing. Okay. We just. I believe you. 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 <laughs> so yeah. So how was that feeling when that baby was first put on you like that? I had to hold back tears. I had to hold back tears. Like, just knowing that that was the moment. Like that was the reveal. You know, that mm -hmm. was the moment when everything was real. It wasn't just me imagining this baby and hoping for this baby and praying for this baby and wanting this baby. It was the moment where the baby presented herself and I could look at mm -hmm. her and have a moment of realness and everything came full circle. It just all of our efforts finally came to fruition and I'm feeling her against my skin and just the immense feeling of love and gratitude mm -hmm. and God that was in the room and my mother that was in the room, everything just was swirling in that moment. And just to have her lay on my skin for that hour, I, I had so many moments of reflection, you know, just everything that we went through, the significance of my mother, my mother's passing and the pregnancy and all that I believed that to be just really came to a head mm -hmm. right there in that room. Uh, you know, we have a lot of love in our lives, mm -hmm. um, but there was something about the love that I felt in those moments that I don't want to say it trumped other feelings, but damn near came close to it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it was, it was a surreal feeling. And not only because the baby was born, but because how difficult it was. Can you believe this was only seven days ago? Yeah, but Doesn't also- Doesn't it feel longer? Yeah, it does. Well, go ahead. But also because this is the last one. This is the last yeah. time I'm gonna see that like that. Are you sure? Yes. This is the last- Wait, wasn't he getting at that, like the last podcast? Were you- Kind of leaning, like, what were you going to say? I feel like you didn't finish. No, I wasn't going to say nothing. That's it. This is it. I'm a clip snip. Are you really going to do that? I don't know. I got to do my homework, but I'm going to take my balls off, whatever. But no, nah, no more. This is it. <laughs> now, this is it. This is it. And you're certain? Yes, I'm certain. Okay. Yes, what I'm makes certain. you so certain? Um, like, why are you, um, why do you have so much conviction? Oh. Uh, Honestly, um, and I ask you partially because Madison, when we told her that we were trying for a sixth before, you know, the miscarriages and the in vitro and everything, she just kept asking me like, why? Like, I don't even understand it. Like, why do you want another right. one? Like you have five beautiful, healthy kids. Like, why do you want another one? And I explained to her, like, daddy and I have so much love to give. Right. And you children bring so much joy to our lives. You are all choices. You are all choices. And you enhance us. And when, you know, we're blessed with you, we enhance you. And there's just so much love in this house, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, all right. <laughs> like, <clears throat> <clears throat> so, you know, after this baby was born, Madison, who's now 20, you know, she had a birthday um, in November. After this baby is born, you can't pry her away from the baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, she adores this she baby. She does, yeah, absolutely. And every day for the last seven days, she says, you know, Mom, you should think about having one more. Why don't you have one more? You should have another one. Like, if you can do it, you should have another one. And I'm like, why the sudden change in you know, reaction to the idea of another baby. And she's like, this baby is just so special. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can make another one of these, <laughs> if mm 
you should, you know? So she really changed her perspective. So why are you like hell bent? I mean, I, I think it should be our last as well. Like we've already decided that, but why such conviction? Um, I think from, I think for myself, one, um, I don't want to be the old, old dad. It would only be a year older than she is. Like, I mean, give me a break. That's I not, mean, so that's not a good reason. I'm, 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 there's a couple of reasons, but I mean, that's one of them too. Uh, two, um, I want all our kids to be financially great. Mm -hmm. um, and they will be. They're at the door right now. Ben, can you open the door? So I instead of one sixth, door. it'll be one seventh? No, it's, it's not that at all. But, you know, we work hard to give our kids the best. You right. know what I mean? Um, there was a sermon T.D. Jake said the other day that was like, um, you work hard so you're, you're, you can give your kids stuff better than you had. Right. Like there's a better education, a better life, a better this, a better that. Um, and I think I'm at an age right now and I'm at a feeling where I just want to relax and watch them grow. Um, I want to lay in my own bed and watch my kids, you know, go from caterpillar to butterfly. Um, and I really, I don't want to, um, I want to spend more time with them and not spend less time working and more time with them. Right. I think the first 40 years of my life I spent working and busting my ass. Now it's time I done did it. Now it's time to enjoy it. Right. And that's where I'm at right now. And I just <clears> really, I, I think I'm, I'm good at six. I think six is a good enough number. And they don't, and there's no cars that have uh, seven, eight people. So I'm good at six. You what about you? Sprinter. Yeah, right? What about you? I'm not going to lie. Hey, babies! Did they come inside? Yeah, they came. They're inside? I guess oh. tell them to be quiet, but go ahead. <clears throat> good job, Benz. I'm not going to lie. I was absolutely dead set on Peyton being the last one. But after I saw her little face and I've been taking care of her for the last seven days, I'm like, maybe you need a little playmate. No, you just stop it. Aren't you tired of being pregnant? Like you've been pregnant like the last 10 years. <laughs> No, I'm not tired. My goodness. I love being pregnant. People think I just knock you up so you can just stay pregnant all the time. I know. <laughs> no, but, no, but I, no, I love, I love being pregnant. But my pregnancies have all been easy. This pregnancy, um, I had the most, um, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, I don't even know what to call it, but... This was more like what I would consider a normal pregnancy than mm -hmm. any of my other ones. Mm -hmm. Like um, at about two or three months pregnant, I was extraordinarily hungry. Hungry wasn't even the word. I was like starving mm -hmm. all the time and shoving so much food into my mouth on such a regular basis, um, which I hadn't really experienced before. Like this starvation where I would get headaches because even after I just ate, I was still so hungry, like, I was eating constantly, no? Mm -hmm. um, you think that's funny, Benz? What do you have to add? You were, you were oh, she said I was hangry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I constantly had a headache, and yeah, it would put me in a mood. Um, and then I would say the last three weeks, I felt like someone put a crowbar and like lodged it in my pelvis. Like I felt like her head, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So I felt it kind of in my back and I felt it, my hips and you know what I mean? Um, but aside from that, those two things, it was a lovely mm -hmm. experience. And yeah. then the labor was fine and the delivery was easy. You know what I mean? So I feel like I could be a professional child, child bearer, like a surrogate. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I could do it for a living. So no, to answer your question, no, I don't. I wouldn't be tired of yeah. being pregnant. No, nah, it's just, you know, it's, it's you know, being parents. Yeah, but being have you father, seen her little mother, face, I though? I do, and I love her little face. I was <laughs> kissing her all today. Um, but it's just a lot. And, and the way you map out our kids' lives is a lot. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I'll be honest, like, when you become pregnant in them last months, it's a lot. What but, do you mean? Well, let me break down the kids' schedule. So the kids go to oh, school okay. from mm -hmm. 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., right? 2.40. Yep. 2.40. Their first activity starts at 3.30 every day, sometimes two activities a day. 
So you're talking tennis, you're talking soccer, you're talking basketball, you're talking softball or baseball, you're talking gymnastics, you're talking dance, you're talking tennis. Taekwondo. And taekwondo. And piano. acting, piano, and golf. That's all in one week, right? They only have one day off. So now, off on Sundays. now you're talking about a, now you're talking about an entrepreneur, right? Somebody that does car shows, does the Breakfast Club, does parties, does real estate, uh, and owns a bunch of other businesses. So now between all that and running left, right for each kid's game and gymnastics and piano and acting and this, that, and the other, and yada, yada, yada. And now, now what's one more? And then I'm driving Ben's Come crazy because I'm like, yo, Ben's, you got to get the kids today. And Ben's be like, okay, boss. So now she's at gymnastic. Gia's pregnant, so she can't really move around. So Gia's at home. Will is doing something. And it's just like we need a village to raise these kids. Well, we need a village to raise our village. Right. We need a village to raise our village. <laughs> and it's a lot. So it's, it's, it's so much. It's like so many things we can't do, which is not a problem because I love my babies. I love them so much. I, kiss them. I love my babies. But, you know, I just think it's a point now. It's like now I just want to see them grow. So, you know, what I, what I do want to ask is why the name Peyton Blair Casey? Well, as you guys know, when my mother passed, um, what I wanted, what would have been the ultimate goal for me in naming our child would be to incorporate something from my mother in her name. I wanted Kingston. I thought Kingston would have been dope. Her mother was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Kingston yeah. is just a wicked name. I just thought oh, that would have been huh? cool. Um, it's wicked. And it's, 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 wicked. it's something that you don't really hear that much. So I thought Kingston was it. I was stuck on Kingston. My parents who hate everything, they like Kingston. So I'm like, this is it. I like Kingston. Somebody called on the radio just out the blue one day. It was like, yo, Envy, I think you should name your daughter Kingston. And I'm like, yes, Kingston, that is the name. And then I have a hater, Madison and Logan, those two fucking haters. I don't like Kingston. Why would you do that to that baby? That baby, <laughs> that baby gonna hate her name. It's a girl. Why you put King on it? That's not right. It's uh, too yeah, masculine. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it was a boy, the name definitely would have been Kingston. Like no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But the fact that we were having a girl and the idea of naming her something that sounds more masculine, I was okay with it. I was like, you know what? That is going to be her name and I I'm fine with it. She'll learn to love her, her name. London loved her name. London was like, oh, she's gonna love her name. Madison, on the other hand, said, she's gonna grow up and despise you for giving her that name. <laughs> like, what are they gonna call her? King for short? She's like, if that were my name, I would be livid. And that started giving me pause. It started making me think twice. Only because you never want to name your child something that you think that they may not jive with, that they may not love. Everybody wants to love their name. You don't want to go through life like, damn, of all the names mm -hmm. in all the world, they chose to give me this name. You don't want to put that on your daughter or son. Um, so for us, I didn't want to take that chance that she may not love her name. Mm -hmm. So I just erred on the side of probability. Um, and I said, you know what, in that case, let's choose number two on our list, which was Peyton. The middle name was always going to be Blair because I've always loved that name. And you guys know all of our kids' first names end in an N and the middle name ends in an R. So. We have Madison Taylor, Logan Tyler, London Schuyler, Jackson Ryder, Brooklyn Jagger, and now we have Peyton Blair. So you that's how we came up with the name. That's how we came up. I mean, I've I always I lost I've, that fight. You lost that fight, but you you acquiesced. Mm -hmm. You you said okay. If, yeah. if you like it, I love it. Yeah, I'm, right? I'm, I'm so happy with the name. And I love her name. So so back to the birth. So. The baby is, is beautiful. And like Gia said on the last episode, usually, you know, she would stay in the hospital for a couple of days. They would, you know, take care of everything. So now in the hospital, this is crazy. So now after Gia delivers, right, usually five babies ago, they'd be like, all right, we're going to take the baby to the nursery. First day, you know, they put the, the what's it called? The wristbands. The wristbands. Yeah, they put the wristbands on the baby to make sure they match. 
take the baby to the nursery, they wash, they bathe the baby, they feed the baby, they take care of the baby so mommy can rest. Yes. The stay in the hospital is up. Oh, look. There she goes. Benz, can you go get baby? Peyton, make sure she's good. She probably needs to be fed. Thank you, hon. Thank you, Benz. Um, the time in the hospital has... You okay, Benz, or did you trip again? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Benz stays tripping on something mm -hmm. or bumping into something. <laughs> um, it's about the mom recuperating. Right. This time, with COVID, there's no recuperating. No, there's no recuperating. Like, forget about recuperating. They don't want the baby in the nursery, as they put it, commingling co with other babies, just in case any COVID has gotten into the hospital. They want to keep your baby with you in your room. So hold up. So now, after Gia delivers the baby, you know, they give you your own room. So they take you out of labor and delivery and put you into a room. Usually when they put you into the room, they push the baby into the nursery, the mom can sleep, and then the baby comes back. So when they bring the, Gia... The, the, mom, the baby comes back when mom requests the baby. Correct. So now, yeah. the baby, you know, mom goes in the room, <laughs> they push the baby right in the room with I'm like, my legs don't even work yet. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, whoa, 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 where's this baby going? Yeah. I'm like, well, mommy got to sleep. They was like, no, 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 because of COVID, this baby stays with you. We like, whoa. So now Gia's no longer, well, we stay two, three days, we chill. Gia's like, all right, then I want to go home. If, if, yeah. if I got to do this here, I'd rather go home and do it where I can have everything where I need the way I want it to have it. Right. So like our bedroom right now is like a factory, right? There is bassinet, swing, uh, swing. Motion uh, simulator. Motion simulator. Motion sim simulating he bassinet. He heat wiper. Uh, heat wiper? It it's the wipe warmer. Wipe warmer. It's the heat wiper. <laughs> You know what I meant. We got the heat wiper. We got the uh, the thing for the nose. We got bottles. We got extra bottles. We got everything there. Like, like right around me. So you don't even have to get up in the middle of bed because it's like bing, 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 bing. Yeah, she gets up every... She's a hungry little thing. Yeah, she's a savage. So she's up like every two hours to eat. So I'm like... Get my nope, bib. You're not, do, my you're not doing that. You're not doing that. So... I was doing that because I didn't know how to work it. No. Uh. I figured out how to work it today, this, so now I use it. This is the coolest thing ever. So, yeah. you know, if you have a kid or if you have but a baby. We might be late on it. It might have been popping the last five years since Brooklyn's been born. Maybe, We're I don't just know. new. You're like the newest, dopest thing ever. I don't know, but this, 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 this thing is dope to me. Sun, sun. So they got like, this. <laughs> I thought it was dope. So they got, this, they got this machine that actually makes the bottles for Yo, you. Yo, it's like um, a formula coffee maker. Like, yeah. it's called the Baby Brezza. I don't know what it's called. People out there like, yo, y'all late. Yeah, we might be late. We so what it does late. is, so let's say you want four ounces. You type four, boom, it gives you boom. the water and the goes, powder, mixes it up and everything and puts it in the bottle and it's yours, boom. And you'd be like. So you don't have to heat it up anymore. You know, before you have to you heat the bottle up a little bit, heats it up for you and everything. It's amazing. You get to choose like warm, extra warm, maybe hot. The hot. I didn't use the hot. I didn't use the hot either. I don't know if a hot's even I, I don't even it's know if hot's an option now. Probably, probably just not. made that up. But it definitely mixes the bottle. It does everything yeah. for you. So you just chill, sit back and relax and just... Yeah, because we... Oh, so I don't breastfeed. No. I've never breastfed any of my children. None of them have seen a nip, let alone like latched on. Um, I'm not suggesting or recommending that for you. Everybody has to make their own decision and what's best for them, what's best for the baby. But... I wasn't breastfed. Rashawn wasn't breastfed. I think we're all right. Yeah, we're pretty good. I mean, my mom so, did have me smoke a cigarette, so I'm all right. Yeah, so maybe I shouldn't have used that. Yeah, so maybe your shouldn't. mom's but decision we, is we, like we, a yeah, we, we good money, reference. Yeah. <laughs> she did her best. But back in the well, day. Well, my mom didn't breastfeed me. And I think I have a relatively, I think I have a really good immune system. Yeah, I think so. You know, like I don't really get sick much, yeah. right? So um, I chose not to breastfeed any of my kids, so we use the powder. So this baby Brezza is for people that use powder. And I personally like the powder because the Similac pre-mixed, oh, there she goes again, the Similac uh, ready-to-go mix thing formula or whatever, um, I don't know. I feel like they mix it and it sits on a shelf. I like the idea of the powder, you add water, you shake it and it's fresh and frothy mm -hmm. right there for the baby. So that's what we do. So I like the baby Brezza. Yeah, the baby Brezza is what it is. So that's what we use. So so now after Gia stayed in the hospital only one day, 
Literally, the doctor was like, no, you could go home tomorrow. So next day, she was I home. I was like, tomorrow? I was like, Monday? I go home on Monday? She was like, yeah, if you choose, unless you'd like to stay longer. I was like, that's new. Nope. Mm-hmm. And now at the hospital, you, you're only allowed one guest. Before, the whole family would come and see the baby, but now you're only allowed one well, guest with well, the dad. The, okay, so the husband or the father of the child plus one guest. That's right. So yeah. you're only allowed one That's guest. That's how our hospital so works. None of the I don't kids, know how yours would be. Yeah, so none of the kids were, were able to come. So pretty much everybody was at the house waiting. So, um, of course, we were a little late. So um, I think maybe like two, three days before is when we actually bought everything, the strollers, the car seats, and all that. And then I had to put it together. So, yeah, she got the little baby. Hi, Katie Chu. Auntie Ben's. Sweet little baby. Hi. Hi. Okay, we do the podcast. We I'm do the sorry. podcast. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, so we had to put every I had to put everything together. So when we came home, there was a huge sign outside that said, It's a girl. Mm-hmm. And Ben's and shout to Adasha, they set up these beautiful balloons. It's a, a bouquet when you walk in. It's What's like the an, name? Um, Adasha. Adasha's business. Uh D Dash Dash, D- Dash 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 Diva. Dash Diva event. Let's put her Instagram at yeah, the Yeah, we bottom. put up there. Yeah, she yeah. does all my car shows and everything. Yeah. So uh shout to Adasha and Ben's, thank you for that. So they did this whole beautiful intro to the crib when you walk in filled with balloons. Our staircase so is all filled with balloons. So it was, it was very such beautiful. a warm welcome. So now when we get home, it's been put like this for the first couple of days I didn't even touch the baby. Everybody in this house had the baby but dad. And he was but, tight about it. We, uh, we actually argued about it. Uh, if you want to tell a story, tell a whole story. Uh, I didn't mind. I Why didn't are you mind. lying? I didn't mind. It's that nicotine. I didn't mind. To that nicotine. I didn't, I didn't mind. <laughs> Running through your blood. So Madison had the baby for like three days straight. Wouldn't even give the baby up. Uh, Jackson wanted the baby. London wanted the baby. Brooklyn wanted the baby. They want to kiss the baby. Grandma wanted the baby. Godparents. Wanted, everybody wanted the baby, which was fine. Which was fine. It got to the point where, remember when we did the reveal, Jackson was like, I don't want no more girls. He loves, he kisses the baby oh at least 50 gosh. times a day, which is amazing. Jack C. True. Oh my gosh. He comes in there and he's like, Mommy, just staring at the baby makes me so happy. Aww. Nothing makes me happier. I just love her so much. Can I kiss her? Can I sit crisscross applesauce and you put her in my lap? Crisscross applesauce is um, what we choose to say now instead of Indian Cross style. Legs, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, right? We don't use those terms anymore. But crisscross applesauce. Can I sit crisscross applesauce and you put the baby in my lap and he'll just sit there and hold the baby? And I'm like, okay, you have to hold her by the neck. The rest can kind of sit in your pocket of your legs, and the baby will drift off to sleep, and he just sits there smiling, this genuine smile, because you guys, if you guys saw our gender reveal, you know that he was, he pretty was upset very about that. sad. Yeah. He, he resorted to tears when he found out that it was a girl at the gender reveal. He definitely did. Eric, we could probably insert like a little quick video of him crying at the gender <laughs> reveal. I'm glad you got his name right. <laughs> Papa, you sad that it's not a boy? You sad? Aww. It's okay. It's okay. Aww. Oh, my little sweetie. We'll open up this one. Okay, hold on. Food. Give food. me one second, okay, sweetie pie? All right? Give me a kiss. I love you. Come here. Okay. Maybe we'll work on another one just for you, okay? Okay? Would that make you happy? Maybe? Mommy. Yes? This thing is Logan doesn't play games for me. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna work. Look at me. I'm gonna work. Look, look at me. Look at me. I'm gonna work on Logan too. Okay, I'm gonna make him play games with you. Okay, right, Logan? Okay. But <laughs> so everybody was so happy, and there's just so much love in this house, and you know the baby's here, and as you see, it's it's like I said, a village. You see Mercedes, she's feeding the baby and about to birth the baby. Uh, it's just we're just like a, a big family, so I'm super duper excited. Baby six is here. Peyton, Blair, Casey, and we're just ecstatic, man. And I just want to say thank you so much. I mean, every time I go to a party, you know, uh, before the baby was born, people are like, is, is the baby here yet? Uh, now, when I was DJing in uh, New Orleans and um, West Virginia this weekend, everybody was like, how's the baby doing? So we just want to say we thank you guys. Sorry it's been so long, but we've been doing a million and one things between the book, the house, uh, the baby, the car shows. But we just want to say thank you guys. and. Definitely get the book. It's gonna it's it's gonna be amazing when you get a chance to read it. Yes, you'll know us on a deeper level. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, I want to shout out to uh, our assistant Mercedes. 
uh, Mercedes. Now, when the baby was born, it was the day of her closing. So um, the, her closing was on Monday. Not, yes. The baby came on Sunday. So I still went to her closing. Uh, she had a hard time with this closing. At first, it was, you know, she had to get her credit right. Then uh, the lady decided that she didn't want to move out the house anymore. She was like, I'm not moving. Uh, Ben's had to damn near force the lady out. Uh, there were so many things and obstacles that Ben's had to do to buy that house, but we are so proud of Ben's. She purchased her first house, no co signers. She did it on her own. Uh, the house is amazing. It's two bedrooms, uh, three bedrooms, loft. Uh, Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I'm so happy for her, so proud of her. Gated community, she really did her damn thing. So uh, I just want to say salute to you, Mercedes. Very proud of you. Uh, and you follow her on Instagram so you can see pictures of the house and what boot she's camp doing, her Benz. designing and all of that. At Boot, boot Camp Benz. At Boot Camp Benz. Yes. And, and again, before we get up out of here, I just want to tell you guys, don't forget our book. Pre-order our book, all right? From, from here on out, Every week we're going to do something different, a topic about our book, about our relationship, about something that we've been through, that we talk about, and we want to discuss it with you guys. But definitely pre-order the book. You can go to Abrams site. You can go to Barnes & Nobles. You can go to Amazon. Pre-order, pre-order, pre-order. Take a picture. We would love to repost it. The name of the book is? Real Life, Real Love, Life Lessons on Joy, Pain, and the Magic that Holds Us Together. Yeah, we talk about everything yes. in that book. Uh, how we stayed together, uh, the trials and tribulations. I mean, the book, it was very therapeutic for me. Um, going through a lot of that stuff again, I'm looking at it from a different angle, a more mature uh, point of view, opposed to uh, me being a child and me being very immature, me being um, insecure. So to look at that, and it's for myself, it's, it's, an, it's a way for me to talk to my daughter and my son to tell them, what not to do or for my daughter to tell them what to look for um because i say this all the time if Gia shouldn't have married me like we shouldn't be together right now the way i acted the way i treated her during those times so i thank god and, and i'm very grateful for for everything and for her deciding to stay and, and forgive and to stay with this crazy guy right here um because we shouldn't be together just the way i treated her the insecurities and all that other stuff so we talk about that lane and how we stayed together and how we made it work so i want you guys to read it and hopefully if you're having problems in your relationship or you're looking for a relationship and there's things hopefully it can help you and uh that's it yeah we talk a lot about family and parenting mm -hmm. there is a whole section actually on family and parenting so if you have a family or you aspire to have a family, that's a section that might be really beneficial to you. I just feel as though the way that we outlined and formatted the book hits so many nails I agree. on the head and we delve so deep and um, we really reach into our hearts and our memory and our um, unabashed like truth and honesty you know, to really pour into this book. So I really think that you'll enjoy it. So. You should give it a read. All right. Well, it's time to get up out of here. Take one more sip. Go ahead. Take one more sip. This is it. Podcast well, is over. Now I don't have to. Like, it's over. I'm about to go. I'm yeah, about let me to see. Take, 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 take one shot. sip. Take one sip. Go ahead. Let and me see. And then we could go and work on baby number seven. No, I got six weeks. Six to eight weeks. Six Can't to eight work weeks. on nothing. Look, take a sip. Take a sip. Come on. I'm just going to take a sip. Take a sip. Big sip. I don't have to concentrate as hard. Come on. Like I said, this was really kind of messing with my mental <laughs> during this podcast. Take a sip. All right. And don't forget to email us. Uh, what is our email? TheCaseyCrew at gmail.com. T-H-E-E. -E. Has it Crew. been that long? It has. Seven wow. months. TheCaseyCrew at gmail.com. We're back, guys. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll start doing live shows again. Matt, no, not even hopefully. We will do because we're going to go on tour for the book. So <laughs> hopefully we can be in a city near you and uh, can talk to you and talk about the book and sign some copies and... We back to what we do, all right? Maybe next week we'll introduce Peyton to you. How do you feel about that? That's fine. I don't... You know, because a lot of times nothing. people have newborns and they cover their faces. There's something to it. There might be, there's something to it. Like they cover their faces or they don't. I don't care. They there's do. something to it. That's I don't know kid. why. I show my kids. I love my kids. Yeah, but maybe I, it's usually with babies for some reason. I, if, if there's something to it and you know about it, drop it in the comments. Um, but... Maybe if we don't show everything, but I might introduce her to you next week. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We're so excited. <laughs> I'm Dean J. Envy. <laughs> and I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles. Toodles. <laughs>